from Southampton, so I have no pictures of Bristol in my uh, picture, unfortunately. <laughs> <laughs> so this is, um, this is me in the uh, early uh, 1800s, I guess, learning to play five-card stud like I'd seen on TV on the, uh, on the Westerns. And uh, myself and some friends learned to play cards, and we thought that uh, that was pretty good. Uh, in the 90s, uh, Channel 4 started showing late night poker, and that brought something called uh, Texas Hold'em to the fore, and we saw some of these uh, wonderful players. Um, uh, that basically was started at the, uh, the beginning of the poker boom worldwide, which, which uh, now, a couple of years ago, peaked with the World Series of Poker. 9,000 players, $10,000 a piece, that's $90 million on one tournament. So we thought we'd uh, start organizing some tournaments. A little bit smaller, maybe, but we needed some players. <laughs> Where do you get your players from? Um, we, we decided we'd start uh, advertising around. We'd, we'd, we'd want to put some posters up in the local shops, that kind of thing. And then one of us thought about whether what we were doing was actually legal or not. Um, it turns out it's not. Uh, <laughs> the, the 1968 Gaming Act suggests that uh, public uh, gambling, public, running uh, public uh, gambling tournaments is illegal. Uh, unless you're playing for pennies. So we, um, we started looking around at uh, uh, work, maybe we could run something with work, and this is the encouragement we got from, our, uh, from my uh, employers. So uh, I am uh, in the moral, uh, am amoral minority, along with John Terry, I guess. Um, <coughs> so we still needed players, so we, we came up with this fantastic idea. We wanted to play cards, we wanted to get some tournaments going, so we thought that uh, if we run a charity tournament to get some players in, we are more likely to uh, get some players and less likely to get arrested doing it. So we needed some venues. We, uh, we started out uh, thinking big. Uh, we'd, we'd, a couple of us had been to Vegas, and, uh, and uh, uh, we liked the idea of that. Um, the network of church halls in uh, Britain is uh, the closest we've come so far to Vegas. The kind of stuff you need to run a tournament, you need poker chips, and uh, I genuinely could talk for a long time about poker chips. Fortunately, I've only got 15 seconds. Uh, they can be expensive, they can be cheap, it doesn't really matter, but you do need some poker chips. They're the best part of the game, actually. Uh, you need cards. Cards, it might sound simple, but cards come in uh, various types. Uh, you can get paper cards that, that bend and, uh, and uh, get torn in five minutes, or you can use plastic ones like these that last forever and a lot more expensive. So, so uh, you can see that the price is going up a little bit. You, can, you need a timer to organize your tournaments. You can use an egg timer if you really feel like it, or you can get some snazzy software that does all of the organization for you, pretty much, and uh, that's what we use. <laughs> wow, that was 15 seconds. So we need, um, we, you also need tables. This is about, uh, I don't know, about 4,000 pounds worth of tables. So uh, we got a lot of uh, green felt and some gaffer tape, and we gaffer taped the, <laughs> the green felt over those um, Churchill tables, and that works pretty fine. So we have um, uh, people play, pay 10 pounds to, uh, to join our tournaments, and the betting starts off slowly. Uh, because uh, we don't want people to go out too fast because you wouldn't want to drive 100 miles for five minutes effort because that would be ridiculous. The, um, uh, we also need some rules, if you spot where this quote came from. Uh, uh, we, there is a set of rules within poker called uh, Robert's Rules of Poker, and, and that's pretty well uh, recognized, and it does help if you have, when you're running a tournament, one person at each table that really understands it. We need some... Uh, exotic refreshments for our poker players. <laughs> Fortunately, uh, poker players are not that sophisticated in their taste, so chips and dips and a couple of beers is pretty much all we need. One of the odd things about running these things is that you, you, get, to, uh, you get a lot of cash. Uh, if, you're, uh, if you're not used to handling lots of cash, then you do end up wandering around with bundles of used notes in your pockets, and that can be quite, uh, quite odd, uh, particularly when you think you're doing something illegal. Um, <laughs> One of the side effects of this process is that uh, we've managed to raise some money. So half the money that we, we take in in, uh, in fees goes to as a part of a prize fund because poker players need to play for something. And the other half goes to charity. And I guess over the years, we've probably done sort of two or 3,000 quid a year, and, uh, which is not a bad side effect. Uh, along came the 2005 Ga uh, Gambling Act, which um, changed the rules a bit and said that non-profit organizations can do this uh, without, uh, without uh, falling foul of the law. So uh, these days, although we started off a little illegally, uh, it's, uh, it's fine now. And that change in the law has actually uh, made the whole process a lot more accessible. Um, pubs are starting to run tournaments. We've got uh, more kind of poker clubs open up, so it's a lot more uh, accessible. So uh, give it a go if you get a chance. Uh, we've got some information. I can provide it if you need it. 
Um, I don't win a lot, I can tell you. I lose more than anything else. I'm probably not even going to get locked up these days, which is great. Thank you. <laughs>